In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And all you really need to know about this is that Christ is, he sees an opportunity for a teaching moment here with his disciples. Because there are people that are questioning him. This is not far from his resurrection. And this is a time where he's having to prepare his disciples. You guys are going to have to make some sacrifices if you want to be my follower. And this is one of the ways that he chooses to sort of display that. And we'll look in the Gospel of John, verses, uh, sorry, chapter 12, verses 24 through 26, where uh, Jesus says here, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates life in this world will keep life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. One of the reasons that I really love this passage, and I think that it's just so incredibly important, is that when you're looking at this analogy, and I guess because I have an ag background, I have a soft spot for some of the agricultural analogies that Jesus uses. What he's trying to convey to them is that you are going to have to give up your own will if you want to be made into a new creature, if you want to be fruitful. And he uses a grain analogy, and I love that because grain is so small. And the wheat that he's talking about here, he's saying if it falls to the earth and it doesn't sprout, in other words, unless the seed ceases to exist, then it's just a seed in the ground. That's all it is. It's not helping anybody. It's not providing nourishment to anyone. It's just a seed in the dirt. And it's not really doing any good. It says, but if you want to be my disciple, you have to be willing to lose your life. And when a seed loses its life, in other words, when a seed is destroyed and ceases to exist, it transforms into a stock. And that stock can produce a lot of wheat, several different grains which then all have the potential to go off and bear fruit themselves. And so this analogy that he's giving here, he's saying, if you want to follow me and you want to follow God, you have to be willing to lose your own life. You have to be willing to say to God, Father, I trust you. I have faith in you. I know you want good things for me. And because of that, I'm turning over my will, even my desires that aren't necessarily selfish or sinful. I'm turning over everything to you do with me what you will. And once you do that, then you can start becoming productive. Then you can start being a part of a spiritual family. Not only a spiritual family that includes God and Christ, but also a spiritual family that includes your brothers and sisters. Because you'll notice in that verse, what Jesus talks about is, if you don't give up your life, you're just there alone. But what happens when that grain of of wheat grows up into a stalk. Well, then there's lots of grains all around them. And so it's no longer alone. It's doing something. It's being productive and it is with other grains. And in the same sense, he's using this analogy to say, that's what we really need to model our life after that. We give up ourselves. We give up our own will. We give up our own desires and trust that God is going to do the right thing. And that's how he makes us fruitful. That's how he brings us closer to him, closer to our brothers and sisters, and closer to Christ. And if we are willing to lose our life, what we get back, what God gives us in return, is so much greater than the sacrifice that we're making. Because we sacrifice a little, and God sacrifices a lot. And we are the beneficiaries of that exchange. All we're giving up is our old sinful lifestyle, the old sinful man and giving up our own desires that will lead us to destruction if we let them. But once we turn that over to God, God finds a way to make us productive and to make us somebody that can be admired, somebody that has fellowship with one another, 
and can make us a more moral person. Because God wants us to accomplish what he designed us to do, what he wanted us to accomplish. We are designed with a specific purpose, and once we give up our life over to God, we can start fulfilling that purpose finally. That's the kind of life that our Savior wants us to have. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.